welcome to our Better Together episode. It's a very special episode we're having this time around, um, but still centered on how our success in the business is determined by the level of success that we have in our relationships. Knowing that relationships are what determines our success in our business, I thought it best to go to my upline, my mentor, and the one who's really shown me and modeled to me uh, what true relationship business is all about. No less than, of course, our founder and our grand upline, Dato Sri Vijay. So, Dato Sri, thank you so much for... Thank you. One thing to do this interview with me. I don't think we've ever done an interview before. So. Actually, come to think of it, I think this is a first. This is a first. So there's always a first time for everything. 20 years after. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> but you were, you are, you know, my biggest source of learning and inspiration when it comes to relationships. I've always said that uh, you don't know how to give up on people. And I'm still learning that. I still have a lot to learn, but I think that it's something that our network would want to know more of as well. Seeing how they may uh, not struggle as much in doing the business. However, I see that the struggle is more in terms of the relationship side of the business. So I'd like to ask you, Vijay, at what point did you realize that relationships and business go hand in hand? Was there a light bulb moment? Was there a point where you lost a relationship maybe and your business suffered? What was that like for you? I think basically um, it's always been relationships that have been strongly interwoven into my growth as a person. And in the corporate sector, it's again relationships that have been either the um, push that I needed, the support, the platform, or my dearth actually. It ended in me, you know, my walking away from a job. So uh, I realized uh, the power or the necessity of building relationships, even in the corporate sector. And um, I think I, I realized the strength of networking and building relationships very early on. Um, and uh, the, the difference between how it's developed in the corporate sector and in networking. So it was the, uh, it, was, it, was one, it was one relationship that woke me up, or actually the loss of one relationship that woke me up. Um, it's, it's, uh, actually, I quoted it in, in my book, Two Minutes from the Abyss. Uh, a good friend of mine who actually came back from the States so his demise was a big uh, wake-up call, happening right in front of you, so to speak. And that woke me up to the fact that we all don't have time. That if I didn't take the opportunity that I have today, tomorrow is never going to come. And that I had already wasted a considerable amount of time waiting for the so-called perfect moment or perfect vehicle. And there's no such thing. So, um, which ended up with me of taking the the bold step of going to the Philippines. Again, there was another relationship that made the whole Philippines um, experiment, which was what it was at the time, possible, and it was my wife. If it wasn't for her support and her strength and her standing by my side, I would have probably never gone. And uh, she gave that to me. And uh, again, another relationship was my father-in-law. Because it was a daunting task to take this up to my father at that point because, you know, he's a very orthodox uh, person who didn't really see business as uh, something um, long term. So my father-in-law, however, gave me the courage. I still remember clearly, you know, his voice ringing in my ears telling me, if you don't do it now, you're going to regret it. Do it now or never do it again. You know, you've been talking about it enough, just go and do it. So I did. Again, all of this is about relationships. And as you well know, there was a time in the Philippines before where I was near breaking point and it was Japa who stepped forward, another relationship that gave me the confidence uh, to keep moving, to keep going and going on. And um, it's relationships that made this company. It is all of us coming together and believing in each other and 
us relying on each other so many times along the way that made this whole journey possible. And there were many ups and many downs and um, I don't think we would have lasted without the relationship. Yeah. In V Penang, in V Malaysia, VJ, you did say that um, a networker's greatest strength lies in their family. The support of the the support of the you know the women being their greatest strengths, and you talked about uh, Uma being by your side. What about those who don't have their spouse by their side? Uh, what would you suggest or advise to them in the area of how do they build that relationship so that they can build their business together? Basically. I don't think you need to go out there and get married just to do the business. That's true. <laughs> I do believe, however, uh, that it is always teams that make it. So ultimately, I mean, my wife and I are a team. And any family is a team. You know, it is the base team that you start with, you know. So uh, I have, by extension, considered my network to be my family. And uh, both Uma and I have always uh, looked upon the network as a family. I, and uh, even till today, you know, we call them the family. And by extension, QI is the QI family. So we have always believed in, in simply the fact that it's not worth doing anything else without a relationship in place. Because everything else is either hypocritical or in essence flighty. It's going to be over before you know it. But if it's family, it's there. So I would say to anyone who's out there right now, build a family, not a network. Right. So in the process of building that family though, you're looking at people with totally different backgrounds as opposed to your natural family that have shared you know, uh, values, common memories maybe, or even, or even experiences. But in our business, how do you create a family as opposed to just a group of people? To me, diversity is a spice of life. I have always welcomed and embraced the world. I remember the words of Mahatma Gandhi that still ring in my, in my head every time, which says that, um, let every window of my house be open to all the winds from every corner of the world. Let my feet remain entrenched in the soil I was born in. So likewise, uh, I have always uh, striven to make sure that my feet remain in my culture, in the principles that I was born in, in the values that I was brought up with. But at the same time, every window in my soul is open to every other person, every other culture, every other... I have embraced all of them. I, I, and even till today, my wife, my wife is often amazed because I'll be sitting down watching a, a Korean movie or a Chinese movie or a French or a German or Russian. And I enjoy them all, you know. Uh, to be a networker, you have to have a global perspective. I don't look at the diversity. I don't look at the differences. Uh, the differences to me are irrelevant. I look at the commonalities. And the commonalities are simple. We are all fathers. We are all mothers, or sons, or sisters, or brothers. We all have the same, you know, likes and dislikes and uh, issues and dreams and passions and desires. And they drive us all. And those things are not divided by culture, religion, caste, creed, country, you know. And um, I've always... Uh, embrace the commonalities you know as, as simply put um, as Kurt used to say you know cut my skin exactly. and it's red <laughs> <laughs> it's all red <laughs> so uh, I agree with that I, I subscribe to that so I've never seen the diversity to be a challenge I've always looked at it as a strength now Vijay a lot of people look at you obviously and they see your team they see you know the V uh, the V family, your QI family, and they might think that that's something that uh, has happened because it's you and you know you have this um, special gift to bring people together and build these relationships. However, I'm sure that along the way 
there were some struggles also that you had to go through in building these relationships. These relationships didn't become strong overnight. So maybe you could tell us one or two of these struggles and how you overcame the struggles. Because I'm sure a lot of people out there are struggling in building relationships. First of all, I would question whether it's a gift. Uh, because it's not really something that you're born with. You know, it's something you work upon. It's, it's, a, it's a skill, no doubt. It's, you know, um, and it's a skill that needs to be acquired. And in essence, the simplest way to go about doing it is to wear your heart on your sleeve. I have found. And um, I have found that uh, essentially truth prevails. So truth is my greatest platform, it's my greatest strength. I found that uh, the best kept secrets are kept out in the open. So I, I have none. I prefer to just put everything out and bear my you know, soul to the world. And it's worked very well in, in, in building relationships. Because people uh, look towards, you know, how sincere you are. And, you know, and if you see that you are, in essence, walking the walk, not just talking the talk, that you care. You care enough to take the time and the effort to listen to them, to talk to them, to respond, to, you know, be there when they need it. That builds. That's, that's what really builds. All the talking in the world doesn't really help. Uh, it's, it's cosmetic. I mean, it works with a, maybe in the political arena, you know. Uh, but to actually go out and build relationships that last, it comes with time. It comes with cuts and bruises and nicks. It's um, as much as in family, it is in real life. You know, I mean, you build your relationship with your child by being there for him or her you know, taking care of him or her every time he falls. And it is that, the care, that translates. Because, you know, uh, children, like networkers, are essentially the same. They don't listen to what you say. They merely do what you do. Right. So, I know you and I have had, in the process of building our relationship, our relationship has had its nicks and bruises. And I remember one time, uh, after a particular bruising episode, you, you explained to me that relationships are like rubber bands. Yeah. Maybe you can, can you explain that again for you know, those watching? Well, you see, in essence, a relationship needs to be taken you know, to its stretching point, so to speak. And then you know, it rebounds back. You know. And uh, there is no shortcut to that process. You know, a rubber band that's never pulled actually becomes rigid and breaks. If you leave a rubber band alone long enough and never actually utilize it, eventually it becomes brittle and you, it breaks. But if you use a rubber band regularly, stretch it and set it back, that's actually how you keep it, you know, uh, at its best metal, so to speak. So relationships are very similar. You have to basically stretch your relationships every once in a while. In fact, if you don't stretch it, it's probably not there. Right. <laughs> so now, it's been 20 years, and you have people who have um, been on the journey with you for 20 years. Yes, like you. We have. We have. And uh, one of the things, first things you told me, really, was just speak from your heart, decide from your heart, do from your heart. And that's what you just shared with us earlier. How have you maintained these relationships for 20 years? What is, the, what is the key you talked about from your heart, about caring? Is there anything else that has enabled you uh, to maintain a relationship for 20 years? The key word, I think, is hard work. It's just perseverance. You know, uh, perseverance, persistence, and loads of patience, you know, simply no shortcut to this process. And every relationship has its ups and downs. We had so many of our own. I think Jakarta was a point in time that I can remember where we were truly sorely tested. And, uh, you know, uh, but in many ways, when I look back upon it now, considering it's more than a decade, 
today. It is probably also arguably one of the best times uh, that we had together, you and I, you know. Uh, because we were so busy doing what we were doing for so long, we actually did not spend enough time on our relationship. Our maintenance had actually dropped, if you recall. And that forced, um, you know, confinement allowed the two of us in many ways, and of course the four of us as well. But, you know, since the two of us are here, I mean, I can say this uh, from my heart, that was a, a very important time. It was more or less the renewal, if not the rebirth, of a brand new relationship, you know. We had gone through many uh, challenges before, but this one, this one took the prize. I mean, it really took us to the end, you know. It's the biggest rubber band. <laughs> exactly, exactly. But I, I, I still recall with great fondness, you know, um, how we came back together. And in that, our relationship was built again. You know, and in that, we have, you know, uh, forged new strength, new bonds. And I think all relationships are essentially the same when it comes down to that. It takes a, a lot of effort and it's worth doing. It's simply uh, the greatest investment you're going to make in your life. I'd rather spend the time on my relationships than just about any other ship. Very well said. <laughs> I, I do appreciate the fact that you do put in the work 20 years after, how you still put in the work. And that's why I believe these are relationships for life because of that. As we end, Vijay, um, it's Father's Day on June, 7, the, June 17. So this is the month that we celebrate fathers. Is there any particular advice that your father gave you that has shaped how you view and build relationships. My dad was, in essence, my first guru. He was my guide, my mentor. In many ways, uh, I have tried to emulate him, you know. My father's actually greatest message to me, more than in words, was in the way he lived his life. His life was his message to me. What he did every day his love, his caring, his genuine sincerity in everyone who came to his door, regardless of, um, you know, uh, wherever they came from, whatever their travails was, he would never say no. He, he simply did not give up. And um, he didn't give up on me either, you know, or my, you know, my brother. And that was the, the strength that I got out of him. But the one thing I do remember and his words to me were very simply this. When I asked him, you know, um, what is it that I basically needed to do better? You know, what could I have done or what should I do? He simply said to me, the essence of religion comes down to two sentences. Remember it and you will have lived a life well lived. And that is simply be good do good. You never gave up on me. <laughs> and you've never given up on everyone else. And I think that, that is the, that's what I'll tell all fathers anywhere. Because it's your actions that count. It's not about what you say. It's about what you do. So be good and do good. And it'll come back. With that, DJ, thank you so much for spending the last 15 minutes with me and doing my first ever interview with you. Uh, be good and do good. If we use that and follow the words of v Datu Sri Vijay's first guru, I think we can succeed in all of our relationships. And in so doing, we can succeed in our business. Because truly, yes, we may succeed to a certain point alone but it's always better together when we build the business in strong relationships we can really build to last we can be better together and be stronger together thanks everyone god bless you all
Thank you, BJ.